The peace of the Lord be with you. Hello and welcome to our service today. Well, just how many weeks has it been that we've been meeting like this online? I make it, it's the 16th week that we've not been able to meet together in one place. And while lockdown is easing a little and we're very pleased to be getting out and about, there's still a lot of anxiety about and we're not too casual about meeting and getting together in one place. This is the second Sunday in July already, which is set aside as Sea Sunday. This is the day we remember and pray especially for seafarers, those who work on the seas and their families. Sailors Society, Salamaris and the Mission to Seafarers are some of the organisations particularly engaged with those whose life is on the sea and their families. And we'll hear about some of the Mission to Seafarers work a little later in the service. The seas are vast and untamed. We know them as calm and quiet. We know them as wild and explosive. While we may enjoy days at the seaside, which is a bit of a trek for us here in Milton Keynes, we're ever so grateful to those whose work is on the seas, who fish there, who are responsible for transporting our goods on them, and those whose livelihoods depend on them. Our service today celebrates them before God as we continue to pray for them. But first, some prayers of praise. Let us pray. Almighty God, Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer of all, everything is of you, and with all creation we owe our origin to you. Today we recall the vast and mighty oceans and all the life they contain, and we praise you. We are overwhelmed by the mighty waves, and we remember your power. We are astounded by the multitude of creatures within the seas, and we marvel at the complexity of life. Rock pools filled with life, ocean depths unexplored. All their variety and riches give us a glimpse of the wonderful life you give us. In every possible way, gracious God, and with all creation, we praise your holy name. Amen. Lord of all creation, forgive us for the times when we have ignored your teachings and wisdom. Help us to listen to your word and live by it each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all creation, forgive us for the times we have ignored those in need around us. Help us to become more aware of the need of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all creation, forgive us the times we have ignored your will for our lives. Help us to trust you and follow you more each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all creation, forgive us for the times we have ignored the needs of seafarers and have taken them for granted. Help us to remember the vital work they do in ensuring that we have our daily needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, forgive us our sins. Keep your word alive in us and help us to know your peace and forgiveness in our lives each day. Help us to be people who trust and follow you wholeheartedly as we live for you each day. Amen. One of the vital roles that the Mission to Seafarers performs is to fight for the welfare of seafarers, especially those that have been abandoned by their company. Andy Bauman, the port chaplain in the United Arab Emirates, found himself supporting a crew abandoned on their vessel. Andy worked with the crew over many months and on the occasion we're about to see, 
has just taken the crew some water. Here, the captain tells us about their experience so far. So uh, I'm on board with uh, one of the other crews. Um, we've just uh, had a look into the water tanks. Uh, unfortunately, you won't be able to see down there, but it's almost entirely empty. At the bottom is just unpumpable water uh, that looks uh, like it's filled uh, with sand and with dirt. And uh, I'm joined by the captain. Uh, good to you all. Uh, this is a uh, captain of uh, water vessel Azrek Maya, owned by Elite Way Marine Services, Dubai. I am on board now, 26 months and uh, we are all standard more than a year. No salary, no food, no water. Uh, not only then, uh, totally 10 crew, totally 10 crew we on board, and uh, we are really worse. The, our situation on board, we are feeling very bad mentally. Our, we don't get any medical help. Uh, mentally, we are uh, depressed, no salary. No salary for, for me, I'm on board 26 months, 19 months, no salary. My family and myself, all in the nearly worst situation. We are facing a critical situation. Please, all authority I'm requesting to do, please help us get a repartition legally. We don't have a trust on owner. We don't have a trust on company or management. Please, as soon as possible, uh, get me a repartition, all crew, legally please thank you so there you have it we're on board all is calm and quiet uh, out to sea all that's left of the cargo is this little bit of rubble that you can see uh, at my feet but when will justice come uh, when will these men get what is their right hopefully very soon
COVID-19 pandemic has not only dramatically changed all of our lives, it has also had an effect on the life of seafarers and the invaluable work of the mission. Seafarers are one of the hidden groups of key workers. And here, Andrew Wright, the Secretary General of the mission, explains what it has been doing during these unprecedented times. Thank you so much for your interest in our very important Flying Angel campaign. These last months have been really difficult ones for seafarers and their families, and many of those challenges are going to go on for some time yet. As we emerge from this lockdown period into a somewhat changed world, the Mission to Seafarers is going to have to do a number of very important things as we make sure that we're in the best possible position to serve seafarers and meet the needs of them and their families. We're going to have to make physical changes to our centres and our buses to make sure that we are fully compliant with the best possible guidelines. We're going to need to make sure our, our ship visitors are properly protected, not just for their own safety, but to ensure that there is no chance of virus spread to crew. We need to build on the tremendous work that we've been doing in recent weeks on developing digital work with seafarers. I'm really proud of our chapter to chapter facility, which has brought so many seafarers and chaplains together at a time of acute need. We need to build on that and provide for more such services. Uh, we've been doing a lot of often working with others, a lot of advocacy work over these last months, flying the flag for seafarers, arguing for the proper facilitation of transit arrangements and for the protection of their well-being. Uh, these are amongst many things that we need to do in these coming weeks and months, and we need your help to be able to do them. I hope that in this campaign you will find all the information you need about what we're asking for and what we're planning. If not, please do get in touch with us. We'd be very happy to speak to you. And can I thank you again for your interest, for your engagement and in advance for your generosity. We are so grateful. Thank you. The teacher is here, the teacher is here. The word had quickly spread around the communion that morning. He was down by the lake, talking with his followers. We'd know he was in the village, of course. Rumours of his family coming to collect him had spread quickly the night before. Rumours of how he'd snubbed them, snubbed them and even his mother in front of a crowd, refusing to go with her. He told of a sower scattering seed over a field but what kind of sower was this? Seed fell generously on the path, amongst the weeds and even amongst the stones. He sowed upon the good soil, of course, but seemingly with no care when it came to the less fruitful places. Now, we know that you cannot prevent seed from falling on these difficult areas, but most of us take care not to waste too much. We know where we are in the field. We make sure that the fruitful, well-tilled soil gets special care. Yet here was this sower in his story scattering seed and knowing that some would come to nothing. I pondered this. He wasn't talking about seed, of course, nor was he talking about soil. His words, his wisdom, his grace were the seeds and we were the field, that much I knew. Then I saw it in my mind's eye. A picture of this sower with a sack so full of good seed that he had more than enough to spare. He didn't need to be careful in his sowing. He knew that his seed would bear fruit. He knew that some of the good land would produce 100 fold crops. And so he sowed with outrageous generosity. It wasn't that he didn't care for the seed. He knew that each grain held within it 100-fold potential, and he knew the hearts before him, knew that some would not and others could not receive him. And I pondered this, for I knew that this sower would reap a fine harvest, and then set out the next season to sow again, that he would sow again with the same outrageous generosity. And as I pondered, I realised something new that unlike my seed, his seed, his word, had the power to transform even the hard soil where it fell. 
that year after year that falling seed could bring about a change if the soil were willing, if the hearer responded. He sowed not for the crop, though he would celebrate that. No, he sowed because he loved, loved with an outrageous love and gave with outrageous generosity, outrageous grace, and he tended each plant with gentleness and care, and none was disregarded. So I wonder what struck you about this version of the parable of the sower. What hit you between the eyes? I wonder what challenged you. The parables are wonderfully rich stories that Jesus told that challenge to challenged and encouraged those who heard them. But so often we have become, they become so familiar to us that when we hear them today, we often think we know what it is they, they mean. But for me, the parables are meant to be st stories of discovery, a rich tapestry that speaks to us in different ways each time we encounter a parable. So hearing it in a different way brings something different to, to the meaning and helps us to think about the, that parable in a, in a slightly more, more engaging way. It's a bit like a great piece of art. You look at a piece of art and you see one thing. You look at it again and you see something else, something you'd never noticed in that picture before. And each time you look at that piece of art, you see something different, something new. And the more you look at it, the richer the experience of seeing it and that art becomes transformed. And it's the same with a parable. Each time we go to a parable, each time we engage with it, something else hits us. And our experience becomes richer and deeper. The thing that struck me in this version of the parable of the sower was the outrageous generosity of the sower and that the motivation behind all that the sower did was love. The sower sowed not for the crop, the yield, but because they loved. Each plant, whether it was on the stony ground or the path or in the weeds or on the good soil, each plant was tended and cared for. None was disregarded. Each plant was encouraged to be the best it could be and was transformed by the love of the sower. And in many ways, that speaks to me about the work of the mission to seafarers. The mission holds a special place in my heart. As many of you will know, I spent five amazing years working for them in Singapore and in Southampton. And at the heart of all that we did, and at the heart of the mission continues to do today, is that outrageous love for the seafarer no matter their creed or their colour. When you go on board a ship, you never quite know what you're going to experience when you walk up that gangway. But invariably, the seafarers you encounter are overjoyed to see a familiar or a friendly face. 
someone who's willing to listen to them as they share stories of their families or what they've been going through on board. Often, most of the ships today have fewer than 20 crew members on board. And each, each of those crews will be working a four hour shift. So they will see the same people day in and day out for months and years on end. And so having that friendly face come on board, that listening ear, is so important to them. And then there are also, when you go on board, you find out about, uh, about things. Some people may not have been paid for months on end. Others abandoned um, and left on board their ships in, in the middle of the, uh, in, in port, just like we heard from Andy and the crew in the United Arab Emirates. And the mission is there to be a voice to those seafarers, to challenge those injustices. And because it's a worldwide network, it's able to continue to be that voice. And it's able to continue to care and build relationships with seafarers, even if they never come back to the same port. Because whichever port they go to, if there is a mission there, then they will see the a, a familiar face, uh, a friendly face, someone who cares. That I, and they will ex experience that outrageous love. And in doing so, their lives are transformed some dramatically to the fighting for injustice, others less so dramatically. But it's this, this outrageous love and this care and dedication to seafarers that is at the heart of what the mission does. But it's not just at what the heart of the mission does, is also at the heart of which, what we should be doing and do as a church. We have all experienced the outrageous love of the sower. We have been transformed by our encounters, encounter with the sower. And in turn, we are called to sow and to care for those we meet so that we and everyone can grow and become those people that God created us to be. At the heart of our school, Christ the Sower, is this vision that each child, each member of the community grows is nurtured so that they can grow and flourish and be the people God created them to be. It's this outrageous love of the sower that transforms lives and transforms communities and in turn transforms society. And as a church, that's what I believe our calling is to make that difference in the world, to be that sower, those sowers. And where we see injustice, where plants and people are struggling, the sower cares 
and nurtures and gives the, the people the voice that they need. So we stand up for injustice. We fight for people's rights. We see lives transformed. Just like the mission transforms the lives of seafarers and their families, so we too transform the lives of those we encounter. Just as our lives are transformed by our encounter with God. So as we reflect on this parable today, may we be open to what God is saying to us. May we be excited by where God is leading us. And may we have courage to sow outrageously. The sower sweats beneath the sun, surveys his meagre plot of land. The birds are circling overhead, eyeing the seed fall from his hand. Sower's land is not his own, the landlord will demand his cut. There is no jubilee in place, no guarantees there'll be enough. Year after year the snow sows, each year another mouth to feed. The future's bleak. A thorny fact to pierce the flesh of human need. Come springtime, some green seeds will sprout, some harvest time there will be bread. But when will come the promised time, the end of what the prophet said? The sower said, believing God is still our friend, believing justice can prevail, and surely will do at the end. Forgive us, Lord, if we neglect the urgency of human need. Let hope inspire pragmatic love to flourish like the soul sea. A time of prayer and reflection as we pray to our loving God. Loving God, we give thanks for all who support us in our daily lives. The key workers, health and social care workers, cleaners, shop assistants, police, fire and ambulance, refuse collectors, council staff, lorry drivers, seafarers. Loving God, we lift up to you those who are facing storms in their lives at the moment. Loving God, we pray for our families and friends, especially those who are separated from their loved ones. Loving God, we pray for our communities. Loving God, we give thanks for the work of the mission to seafarers and all the other agencies that look after those at sea. In the quiet, we bring before God those on our hearts.
Gathering all our prayers together, we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. The Lord's Prayer, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
the mission to seafarers are putting together a video for the sea sunday which uh, we would like to invite everyone to watch uh, it promises to be an interesting one because it's going to be involving uh, people from different countries all over the world uh, to watch the video please visit www.missiontoseafarers.org forward slash c dash sunday that's www.missiontoseafarers.org forward slash c dash sunday let us pray May the love of God be the passion in your hearts. The joy of God your strength when times are hard. The presence of God a peace that overflows. And the word of God a seed that you might sow. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Now and always. Amen.